Incorrect. No way? No way. So you say he starts to run, does a stutter step, starts to come towards you, mm -hmm. and? At that time, I gave myself another mental check. I, you know, can I shoot this guy? You know, can't, legally, can I? And the question I answered myself was, I have to. If I don't, he will kill me if he gets to me. When he says, it all happened so fast I couldn't think, then later says, I paused and thought, can I legally shoot him? Listen, that doesn't add up. There's so many things that he don't He says add he didn't up. have other options. That, that's from the, from the mouth of Officer Wilson. Look, do you know how many times I've ever sided against a cop? Never. Hmm. But uh, it, to me, this is bigger than a badge. And I don't like speaking out against a cop, but this doesn't add up. He's already overpowered me once. If he gets to me, I will not survive. Even though he's, what, 35, 40 feet, feet away? Once he's coming that direction, why, if he hasn't stopped yet, when's he going to stop? So you've already fired twice. He starts to come towards you. After he's coming at me and I decide to shoot, I fired a series of shots and paused. What did you see? I noticed at least one of them hit him. I don't know where, but I saw his body kind of just flinch a little. And after that, I paused and I again yelled, you know, stop, get on the ground giving him the opportunity to stop. And he ignored all the commands and he just kept running. And so after he kept running again, I shot another series of shots. And at least one of those hit him because I saw the flinch. And he stopped. I stopped, correct. I stopped and I said, you know, get on the ground, get on the ground. Well, this time he's about 15 feet away. So I start backpedaling because he's just getting too close and he's still not stopping after. From what you were I, backpedaling? Yes, away from him. Because I was like, he's already running through these shots. I mean, he, they weren't phasing him. It, it didn't, didn't matter to him. And he was looking through me. The face and the image he was presenting was just, I wasn't even there. Like what he, did you see in that face? Just aggression. You know, there was, there was nothing. It was like hollow just looking through me. And as he gets to that 15 feet after I fired the second round of shots, he gets to about eight to 10 feet, and as he does that, he kind of starts to lean forward like he's gonna tackle me. And eight to 10 feet is close. And he then does run away. Yes, he does. How far does he go? I don't know. I mean, around 30, 40 feet. The entire scene from, a, from approximately the car door to uh, the shooting is about 35 feet. So you felt it was your duty to give chase? It, yes, it was. That's, I mean, that's what we were trained to do. And he runs out of the car, gets about 30 or 40 feet. You can now get out of the car. Mm -hmm. You start to follow him. And then he stops? He does stop. Even though he's, what, 35, 40 feet, feet away? Once he's coming that direction, why, if he hasn't stopped yet, When's he going to stop? So you've already fired twice. He starts to come towards you. After he's coming at me and I decide to shoot, I fired a series of shots and paused. What did you see? I noticed at least one of them hit him. I don't know where, but I saw his body kind of just flinch a little. And after that, I paused and I again yelled, you know, stop, get on the ground. giving him the opportunity to stop. And 
he ignored all the commands and he just kept running. And so after he kept running again, I shot another series of shots. And at least one of those hit him because I saw the flinch. And he stopped. I stopped, correct. I stopped and I said, you know, get on the ground, get on the ground. Well, this time he's about 15 feet away. So I start backpedaling because he's just getting too close and he's still not stopping after. From one You're backpedaling? Yes, away from him. Because I was like, he's already running through these shots. I mean, he, they weren't phasing him. It, it didn't, didn't matter to him. Shots. He gets to about 8 to 10 feet. Uh, four of them entered his right arm, as you can see there. And as he does that, he kind of starts to lean forward like he's going to tackle me. And 8 to 10 feet is close. I mean, that, if he's going to tackle me, he's going to tackle me at that point. And I looked down my barrel of my gun, and I fired, and what I saw was his head, and that's where it went. And when he landed, he had fell face first and actually slid on his face and upper body. And as he did that, his feet had come up in the air from all the momentum he had from running at me. So you think he'd been hitting you with his right hand and holding the cigarillos in his left hand? I think he was hitting me with his right with the cigarillos at first and then switched it at some point to his left and then handed them off. And then what happens? When he, after I look at him, he's kind of shocked. He gets even angrier. His aggression, his face, the intensity just increases.
So I mean, I, if, if he's going to tackle me, he's going to tackle me at that point. And I looked down my barrel of my gun and I fired, and what I saw was his head, and that's where it went. Right in the top of his head? Yes. Some witnesses have also said that they actually saw you stand over him That'd and shoot incorrect. in the top of his head. That would be incorrect. It's my understanding that the grand jury had made a request that they wanted to hear our results from the independent autopsy. I don't know what happened or when that happened uh, in the process of things, but I also know that Ben also, Ben Crump, had to push for Dr. Bodden to be able to come testify mm -hmm. today, and it was finally allowed. What it tells us is the kill shot that actually hit the very top of the head, right here at the apex, actually went in and traveled to the right and towards the front of the head when it went in. So in other words, as he's falling forward, the barrel of the gun and the bullet trajectory is actually in a downward angle being aimed towards the ground as it goes into the head. I shot a federal agent 16 days ago, shot him dead when I was bleeding to death with a shoulder wound that he'd shot me. He I defended myself to the best of my ability. I was hoping I could go through life without doing such a thing. And maybe some of you have actually defended your own life in a similar fashion. It's very sad you have to shoot or kill somebody. Maybe some of you were police officers and have had to do the same. And I don't know if you ever kill a human being, you're never the same as a person who never has killed a human being. It is with you for the rest of your days. Whether you do it in war, whether you do it in murder, whether you do it in self-defense, you have taken one of God's holy creations off this planet. And there is a void there. And I feel that, and I'm very sorry for that. But I had to defend myself. Mm -hmm. Something you think that will always haunt you? I don't think it's a haunting. It's always going to be something that happened. You, are, you, you have a very clean conscience. The reason I have a clean conscience is because I know I did my job right.
But first, obviously, the big news of the past few weeks, the town of Ferguson, Missouri, where the shooting by police of teenager Michael Brown has sparked a series of protests, which in turn sparked a, uh, let's say, stern response by police who <laughs> appear to be auditioning for RoboCop. It's, uh, it's a story that has a lot of people outraged and upset. I came back from vacation because I am furious. Of course you are! <laughs> black teenager gunned down in the street by police under suspicious circumstances who wouldn't cut their vacation short to register their fury you'd have to be a monster or in my case enjoying a particularly nice vacation <laughs> but good on you mr o'reilly for coming back unless of course you're furious about something else furious about how the shooting death of 18 year old michael brown is being reported and how various people are reacting to it yes That is the outrage. <laughs> the shooting of Michael Brown and any lack of transparency from the police department responsible for said incident is outrageous in how it has been reported. <laughs> and I guess that's not the only reason to be angry. Is he going to get a fair shake, this officer? There has been a rush to judgment. Eric Holder flies into Ferguson yeah. you know, with his, with his you know, superhero cape. This mantra of the unarmed black teenager shot by a white cop, you know, that description in and of itself actually colors the way in which we look at this story. Yes, describing the actual facts of the case <laughs> really does color the way we look at it. White cop shoots unarmed black teen does sound terrible. <laughs> Whereas, say, hero cop kills alien hunting humans for sport <laughs> would put a completely different spin on things. And you know what? There's so many other stories out there. Why aren't we covering New York? Why aren't we Why covering aren't we black on black crime? Yes! <laughs> Why all the interest in holding police officers to a higher standard than gangs? When a cop pulls me over, I say, I put my hands outside of the car. If I'm carrying a weapon, which I'm licensed to carry in New York, the first thing I tell the police officer is, officer, I want you to know I have a, a legal firearm in the, in the car. I often would, would even take my, my step out of the car, lift my shirt up so we could see where the gun is. You really do have no f***ing idea, do you? You really do. Mr. Massery, did you spit on a police officer? No. No, I didn't. That was an expression that uh, we use in uh, Arabs, you know what I'm saying? Basically, it's just a sound of me being, you know, me spitting. That's not what I was actually doing. Do you think you're good, helping? You know? Do you think you're helping the situation if, if that's the behavior in which you're involved? Well, you know what? I don't think we should be looking at citizens about how they react towards their public servants. It should be the other way around. Now, what, I, what you saw right there was reality TV. People are pissed off about how they're getting treated in the streets and how people are getting killed. 
They should be looking at that besides our reaction. We have a right to be mad. Our anger is justified. So any other narrative besides that is just people getting off the subject of justice for Von Derrick Myers and Mike Brown. Other than well, that, I, I mean, there's no... I don't buy, I don't, I don't buy no into that. that. And I, I'm going to tell you who else well, I don't think... it's on you if you don't buy into it or not. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because this is our community. But I don't want somebody you, from the outside to judge. Mr. Masri, let me tell you who else I think doesn't buy into it, and that's Michael Brown's father. Right, I'd, I'd like to show you, you, I'd like to show okay. you, or at least allow you to listen to what he's had to say about the situation. Roll that tape. I thank you for lifting your voices to end racial profiling and police intimidation. But hurting others or destroying property is not the answer. No matter what the grand jury decides, I do not want my son's death to be in vain. Mr. Brown has, has made a plea for calm. The president has made a plea for calm. Eric Holder has made a plea for calm. And, and you're taunting police officers by calling them cowards, pigs, bitches, and quote, unquote, I'm praying for your death. Aren't you, aren't you contradicting what those three gentlemen have all asked for? We got freedom of speech in this country, and I can push it to the limit any which way I choose. Behind this, there's blood on the street, and you're worried about words. Come on. Come on, man. I have an idea for That's you. That's what My journalists idea are is... missing right now. Why don't you go investigate something real? Why don't you go investigate something real? I spoke my mind. I'm a citizen. Why don't you worry about us getting killed? The warrants, the extortion, the, ex the, the, the limits on the Mr. Constitution Masri, they put on us. Do you I'm worry about, about that, facts. Michael? No, you're I'm worried worried about what I said. No. All right, now MSNBC host Chris Hayes did this really great interview with Frank Ancona. He is the leader of this particular KKK chapter. And here are his reasoning. Here's what he has to say about this whole situation. Gun shops in the area are reporting a spike in sales. And now the traditionalist American Knights of the Ku Klux Klan are sensing an opportunity, distributing flyers around the St. Louis area that read, quote, attention to the terrorists masquerading as peaceful protesters. The legacy is that uh, we've had a lot of hangings, a lot of bombings, a lot of shootings. That don't bother me at all. I don't know if you can count up the list of victims. I mean, there's, there's no list available. It's the hundreds of thousands, I guess, of people physically intimidated, killed, maimed, butchered, burned out, terrorized. And I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. But what they do is upset the fabric of what we hope is going to be a democracy. You have awakened a sleeping giant. The good people of St. Louis County of all races, colors, and creeds will not tolerate your threats of violence against our police officers, their family, and our communities. We will use lethal force 
as provided under Missouri law to defend ourselves. Joining me now is Frank Ancona. If you read, if you and the remedy, read under, the law, the remedy flyer, under the law is to shoot someone? The flyer says, Frank, if you read it, it says defend. It talks about defense. So in order to defend yourself, that means you're being attacked. It seems like you uh, are attempting to bring about the exact same thing that you're saying you're against. No, actually, it's addressing the people who are making these terroristic threats. Well, the Vatican is a, uh, a principal financial power because in 1824, the House of Rothschild was appointed the sole fiscal agent of the entire Vatican Empire. And that's been going on since 1824. And since 1824, the House of Rothschild has pretty well uh, run the Vatican. So, so the globalists or the Rothschild family run the Vatican, or the Vatican is really employing them as agents? Well, they have to... They have to work with the Rothschilds to stay alive because the Rothschilds control all their money.
So even though Chris Hayes did ask him these questions, the fact that this group is able to portray their view logically on a television station is disgusting to me to start with because they shouldn't even be given the airtime. No matter if he did have these opinions that would uh, condemn their actions like he did, he did, did ask him the hard questions, there's still going to be viewers out there that are going to take his views logically and go and think that that's the right thing to do because that's... It's, it's disgraceful the fact that this organisation that condemns people for the colour of their skin are still allowed to be on a television news station mm -hmm. and still allowed to be an organisation as a whole. It's it shit. It gives me like severe uh, like problems. When I Well, today I was on the Young Turks site, and I noticed something. They do a lot of talking about black people issues, too. A lot. Way too much, if you ask me. In fact, today's discussion was about black women and their dating problems. It was called, What Online Dating Is Like For Black Women? And I'm like, why are the Young Turks so concerned about dating for black people? Then it went on to, does it matter if you're black or white? A study that they found, once again, about black people. And once again, video captures exactly how cops treat black people. What's the obsession? What's going on with you guys? Black, 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 black. Racial profiling at its best. Black producer wrongfully arrested. Oh no, it's not over. There's still more black stuff to go. More black stuff to go. Will the NRA support this gun club? Men in black. Come on. Well, that's a lot of concern for black people. Especially considering that was just in one week. One week, five stories, all about black issues. What is it, Black History Month? Why so many black stories, Jenk? Why so many black stories, Anna? And no, you, the black dude with the drays, Jakari, he doesn't make up for the fact you got no black people on your panel. Now, I do videos, but do you think I would sit around talking about Latinos time and time and time again without having a conversation actually with Latinos? No, I wouldn't. Would I talk about suicide in the white community or meth labs or all the host of other white predominantly focused issues without actually talking to white people. No, because that's that seems stupid. That would seem like I was playing. That would seem like I was a vulture. A culture vulture. Which is what you guys sound like. Now look, I'm not saying you can't talk about black issues, but it seems like you are race peddling just as hard, if not harder, than Al Sharpton. And to me, Look, if we're going to criticize Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton for doing it, at least they are part of that group. The Young Turks is the biggest news network on the internet. They have a million, a million five subscribers, whatever it is that Jenk loves to brag about. What about that? What about every time I turn around, you're pandering to the black community? Crying your eyes out about liberal issues, about blacks, and the things that blacks have to deal with when none of you are black. Jake, at least marry a black woman. Anna, get it on with a black dude or something that'll qualify you for these re recurring conversations about black life. I had it up to here with you guys. It's time you start getting caught out for the BS. You pedaling hard. You're pedaling hard. That bike is moving. That bike is, no, it's not moving, but your legs are moving because you're pedaling hard. You're pedaling. You're race pedaling. That's it. Enough with you. And you know what? I think your subscribers are starting to pick up on it too. They're beginning to see a trend with you. If they want to hear about black issues, maybe they should come see a black person, an actual black man who's actually been black his whole life.
You, you and I do disagree on that. Now, I absolutely despise the KKK. Yeah. I hate neo-Nazis, extremists, all of that. But at the same time, I think it is important to expose and reveal the fact that racism is still alive and well today in certain parts of the country. Yes. You know who we are, you know what our history is. Good morning, Dobson. We are the Ku Klux Klan. We hate niggers, we hate Jews, we hate faggots, and we hate specs. This ain't the Cub Scouts. This is the Ku Klux Klan. If you don't like what we're saying, then go away. I still think that he's given a platform to explain his prejudices. Yeah. Lower Manhattan. They got a rude welcome from the beginning. Watch closely as a Klansman on the right is punched square in the face. Police immediately subdued and arrested the attacker and two others who posed as Klansmen to get so close. On the ground, the man who threw the punch shouted, death to the Klan. An estimated 8,000 other New Yorkers shouted out similar thoughts, but they were kept behind barricades at an anti-K...